Hello. Would you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jim Durrant. Brilliant. And how long have you been working here? I've been at McBean's now 48 years and two months. Excellent. Wow, two months. <laughs> um, can you tell us a bit about the McBean's Oncidium collection? Okay, well, you're standing in the collection now. Um, we have 3,700 Oncidiums. Um, they range from all the old McBean's breeding plants and including the childless collection. Um, so there's a lot of plants out in here which are well over 100 years old. Yeah. Um, so we've got a big historic collection that we would never sell that we use them for breeding new ones from. Excellent. Fantastic. And what are we doing today? Well, it's autumn. Uh, we tend to pop the Oncidiums, and by Oncidiums we're talking of the old-fashioned Odontoglossum odontiolus. Right. These sort of things here. Okay. This when I say Oncidium, it's the really old... So the odontoglossums, as they were for about a hundred years, yeah. recently changed their name. So these are cool, growing, high altitude oncidiums. Right. Brilliant. And they grow completely different to the oncidiums that were the small yellow flowers. Yeah. They are much, much warmer growing. These are high Andean plants, right through the Andes of Colombia, per Peru, into Mexico. High, cool temperatures, lots and lots of shade. So we pot this time of year. Now we are in southern England, we are right at the bottom end of England, we're just off the meridian line, so we're just a few degrees west, and our northings is only we're 50.2 north I think. So obviously if you're watching this and you're in New Zealand, Australia, you do it completely different time of year, mm. but we do it into autumn and then we'll do it again in the spring, certainly not the summer. Um, they absolutely hate summer because I've already mentioned they're high altitude, cool growing plants. Okay, so we'll pot a third of the collection each year. So no plant will stay in the same compost for more than three years. We grow in this sphagnum moss, which is a long fibre sphagnum. To, we, to that we add bark and perlite. Uh, off the top of my head, it's about 60% uh, sphagnum, 20% bark, 20% perlite. Okay. Now the idea is that we keep it very lighty, and airy and fluffy. But it only has a shelf life of about two and a half, three years, i.e. it degrades um, because very acidic. That's why we we'll pot every plant every third year. So we'll always have a plant um, on the nursery that's um, reached maturity. We'll have plants then that have been a first year of maturity and plants that are in their third year, which will be the plants we will be dividing this year, if that makes sense. So we would only expect really two thirds of the collection to be of a flowering state anywhere. The natural flowering period is um, an autumn flush and again on a spring flush. We do get summer flowers, but the quality is nowhere near as good. So normally we can pop fairly early in the autumn, say October time. They'll settle themselves down and flower for Christmas or just around Christmas, and then we'll have another batch flowering for probably March, April time in the following year. Um, in fact, with the very warm summers, I don't like them to flower at all in the summer. Okay, so. This is a small plant we're just going to drop on. This is a three and a half year old plant, so it will flower somewhere in the springtime. And you can see it just makes a mass of these roots, okay. So we're just going to drop that on one size pot. And we do very, very small drops, literally, um, so there's about an inch, inch and a half gap around the old pot, the old root ball rather, and the new pot. So very, very small. That's perfectly adequate. Okay, and when we pop, we literally just fold the, the mixture in and around. None of this pressing down. Keep it very, very light and fluffy. It's a bit like making a souffle. Not that I've ever made a souffle in my life, but that's the idea. So you want then the plant to just sit like that on the top there. Always make sure you put the label in. Okay. So that plant will be now watered in in the next day or two with pure rainwater. We won't use any feed on these for two months. Okay. And why is that? The idea is that the plant can settle in and it, the roots will actually um, will be encouraged to go out and find some nutrient. You're starving them in effect to make them look out for food. Yeah. After three months, we use a very, very low um, strength feed. We use 0.5 millisiemens on the nursery virtually throughout the whole year. 
that's probably a third of the use on a Phalaenopsis or most pot plants. So they'll only take very, very small amounts of feed. Um, as for frequency of watering, it obviously depends where you are and what your light levels are like. Um, we try and keep them just slightly moist, never wet. The whole point of this compost is to get a good 25% air space in there. Mm. If you keep it wet, you'll drown it. Plants need air around their roots, especially these things which are sort of not true epiphytes and they're not true terrestrials, so they're in between and they grow in a sort of a mossy, um, airy condition, so it's absolutely fine. So that's that plant then. Yep. So that's Excellent. that plant. Well, now do just do the next size up. So this is that plant in a year's time in effect. So what will happen now through the autumn time into winter, this lead this leading growth will make a big bulb. So that'll be the front bulb. And then in March, that bulb in its turn will send out a flowering spike. So same again. Literally just take it out. You see them like they love this stuff and make absolute massive like spaghetti roots. Yeah. But the same thing applies, we'll literally just go up one size pot. There's only that small small drop in around the pot. Again, fold it in just very, very lightly, very fluffy. There we go. Just slightly set it in, and there we go. Same applies, no feed, and that will make a full root system over with the literally within the next few months. That will make a full system of root, then we'll get our bulb and then the bigger plant. Yeah. Now then, obviously, after your three or four years, the plants are going to get sort of old, in effect. Mm. So you'll get plants like this. Um, this actually plant is now 60 years old, but obviously we pot it every three years. Um, and you can see what it's done. It's, it's dropped the leaves off the old bit of the plant. It makes these back bulbs. They're still alive, still so the original plant was up here, so it's just gone to your right, in effect. Mm. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll strip all the old compost off. And then we'll take some of the old back bulbs away, because all I really want is the front end of the plant. So we'll just literally get a, a knife and cut through the rhizome. All these bulbs are joined by a small rhizome. So we'll cut through there like that. And then we can take the new plant away from the old plant, okay? Again, I don't want that bulb on there either, so we'll cut that fellow off. And when all we're left with is a very bare plant. And it looks like it's got no roots at all, but it has. All its new roots are all forming around the base. In fact, if I pull this growth down, you'll find there's a new growth coming there. And you have to be very careful doing this, that you don't ruin any new roots. And you'll see the whole new root system is coming right from the base of the new growth. So it's the front of the plant is important, the back of the plant is history. That was four, five, six, seven, eight years ago. Okay, We're now to the new bit. Plants move on every year. Um, obviously in, in the nature they'll be looking for new nutrients. So we pot this, again it will go into a, a small pot, I mean a ridiculously small pot, um, to the point that they're falling over. Um, so we'll put that into something like that. Again, so you've still only got about an inch gap between the, the plant itself and the new pot. Same thing applies, just literally just fold, and mix you in gently, gently, gently. There we go. Same applies, no, comp no uh, fertilizer for a couple of months. Just keep it slightly moist, and that will root up and this time next year, we'll be dropping it on as we did that one. So it'll be going its way back up for three years, in effect. Yeah. Okay. Right, then, the next stage, if you want to, these old bulbs that we've cut off, um, you can start them again. All we do is just trim them down, get them nice and neat. Um, and if you just leave them, not just lying around, but just leave them <laughs> somewhere, you'll find you'll know a new growth will come from the base of this back bulb uh, when it does that, that's the time to pot it, and you'll have a flowering plant in about four or five years' time. Okay. Okay. It still takes, from making a cross, it takes us uh, six years. Um, it's a year to make the cross, um, a year you know, for the seed to be ripe. It goes in the laboratory for a year, and then we still have about four years' growth before we see a proper mature plant. Some will do it much quicker, obviously, but you don't get a proper mature plant. 
Now the other bit of potting is when the plant's done this, it's split itself, it's polarised. I, some has gone to the left and some to the right, so in a set you've ended up with two plants. Um, they'll grow much happier if you split them into two plants. That's a bit like the other one really, but you can knock it out. And this time all I'll do is to sever through the two, and you can see the plant, they divide themselves basically, it's quite simple. Um, we we'll just again cut through that rhizome. There we go. So we'll have one plant there, and then the other plant here. And again, I don't want these old back bulbs on. They have history. So we're left with two plants. They're not quite flowering size. But now it's important to get all the root off that doesn't belong to this plant. So um, be quite rough with them, to be honest. I don't like people that pumps about with plants, you've got to make a bit of an effort about it. Potting should be done quickly. If you have to think about it, you're doing it wrong. It's something that should just be happening quick in an instinct, really. So there we go. So there's one little division, which will go into a little pot. Again, I keep stressing this, don't firm it down. The, as the moss gets wet it'll actually swell up a bit and tightens itself but we're trying to keep the air spaces in there that's the whole point of this. Right this one, I don't know that root belongs to that anyway. Again a nice simple root system. They've got nice plump leading bulbs so they're about to put up a growth so um, it's worth doing. Right same again we'll go into a nice little pot. And it's much quicker to go into small pots and make lots of jumps up, how you do it for a few years, than try and put them in straight into a big pot. It doesn't work at all. Never has done. You end up with too big an area that the plant can't use. So there are. From that one plant, we've ended up with two divisions. They probably will miss a year's flowering. But then we'll have three years flowering after that. Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Um, we grow on very low light levels. And we literally will shade at 450 watts per square metre. So it's very shaded. In fact, in this house, we have whitewash on the outside. We have the computer will bring screens over. Screens. And then, in fact, now we're having very hot summers, and we're actually putting another sort of um, a black, black cloth layer right the way through the house as well. Mm. So it's not dark, um, but it's very, very heavy shaded to try and keep the temperature down. They really don't like growing above about 22 to 25 degrees, but we have summers now of 35 degrees. Mm. Um, and so we compensate so by putting more shading on. Unfortunately, it's upset the flowering slightly because our light levels ironically could be lower in the summer, summertime than they are in the winter. So we'll end up with a few summer flowers. And I said before, the quality of the summer flowers is not good. So if you can grow them somewhere cool, shaded, high humidity, Rain water with just a little bit of orchid feed in there, so very, very light, low levels. Just keep the plants slightly moist. They should grow and flower for you very easily. There's no problem at all. Um, you'll see some of the plants around here. So some of the big mature plants, um, a lot of these are well over 100 years old now. Um, we still use them for breeding, some of the big old plants. Um, and we have a big mature plant. You can have four or five spikes on. Um, and it looks an absolute picture. But you really want to catch this flowering in the winter time. Mm. They, they can't cope with flowers and hot weather. It just drains them out. Um, you get these nice lush bulbs on some varieties. Um, our main breeding line is um, the old Gontoglossum crispum, which is now on Cydium alexandro. Uh, and we've been line breeding these since 1850s, to be perfectly honest. Um, some of the flowers don't look much different from the older flowers, but from our point of view, they flower much quicker, they flower every year, and they grow much easier. Um, some of the very early hybrids were beautiful flowers, but you'd only see them every five years. Well, that's no good to us at all. So we, 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 what we breed for is a whole raft of things, rather than just what the flowers look like. It's how it performs, and really how it performs as a pot plant. And I say, these really aren't pot plants as such. They really don't like our modern houses. Houses are a desert. They're usually over 20 degrees, but only 10% humidity. And we like to grow at about 65% humidity. 
Um, so if you live somewhere dark, dingy and horrible, then that's perfect for going <laughs> Odontoglossums or Oncidiums, as we're calling them now. Um, otherwise, you really need to get this humidity and the shading thing sorted out. Brilliant. Thank you, Jim. Okay, you're very welcome. Yeah.